Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Artificial DM. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some viewer submitted stories, and I love when you guys share your stories with me, and I'm going to tell you guys why. The entire purpose of reading these RPG horror stories, for me, was because I really wanted to share other people's stories. I actually started this YouTube channel not really knowing what I was doing, and it was really more of a way to test and see how YouTube worked. I started reading RPG horror stories and I really enjoyed them. And then when you guys started to share your own stories with me, it really helped motivate me to buckle down and share these tales, especially the ones that haven't been narrated before. We can all gain a bit of inspiration from everybody's stories because you all inspire me. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into this RPG horror story. This story is sent by Angelica over on our Discord server. Angelica, thank you for sharing your tale. A Pathfinder 3.5 Horror Story My friend Gustav offered to GM a game of Pathfinder 3.5, which is D&D 3.5, or Pathfinder 1st Edition, so that I could play a game, as I am most often the de facto GM. Then he told us that the world he was going to create for his homebrew setting was going to be a world where magic has gone wrong. Basically, it would not matter if the spell was arcane or divine or other in origin, there would be a chance that the spell would go wrong, and if it did, you could end up with a variety of different results. That seemed okay, especially since he said that part of the campaign would be geared around fixing the source of magic so that it would work right. But this did mean that healing would be an issue, as we couldn't count on healing spells or even potions on healing us. Yes, he counted alchemical potions as magic. Our group made characters. My character was an ex-noble whose family was butchered and was on a personal quest of vengeance called Oneaja. She was a cavalier in order to avoid playing a magic class. My husband played a tiefling gunslinger named One Bad Motherfucker. We also had an Asimer cleric and a human vigilante. The cleric was named Mute and was anything but. The vigilante was Marcus. We were all to meet up in a huge megacity ruled by a pirate king who supposedly had diplomatic relations with the surrounding nations while also ruling over a huge chunk of land. To which I called BS. He's just a king who owns a fancy ship, but I digress. We all meet up in a guild after shenanigans. Pointless shenanigans where the GM tried to basically take all of my gear while awarding the other players gear. When we get together at the guild, it seems to be a ripoff of fairy tale, except he's added counters for buying and selling things, as well as for picking up work. The guild has rooms for us to stay in for free for the night, and a crazy guy selling healing potions that are causing more harm than they heal. I did my research and picked up lots of non-magical healing items, like healing myrrh, and the DM allowed me to purchase a bunch of items from the apothecary. I even made sure to remind him of the side effects of these healing items, and had my character stress to the group that she would refuse any form of magical healing. We were told that we could only get jobs at this guild, and that no other guild would have us. And, because we were newbies, only certain jobs would be available to us, helping to build the city wall for one gold a day, or taking down some dire rats for two GP each. We, of course, decided to go with the dire rats. So, we gather our stuff and make our way out of the unbelievably huge megalopolis and out into the countryside. Three days travel, mostly through the city, and one day beyond the city walls, to a farmhouse where we learn that the rats only come out at night and are devouring whole fields. So, we set up outside with a big fire pit, as most of us have night vision, and set out just a few torches for those who don't, as we wait for the dire rats. What we get is not a challenge rating appropriate number of dire rats for a four member party. What we get is the GM saying there are thousands of dire rats overrunning the fields that are trying to eat us. Fortunately, most of us are martial classes, but we are eventually forced to flee and barely manage to climb into trees as the rats eat everything. At dawn, the rats retreat. We climb down and the cleric starts healing people whether they want it or not. And this is where I started to hate the game. The cleric smacks people when he casts spells on them. And our GM says he has to roll to determine if something goes wrong with the spell. The GM then rolls percentage dice, hidden, then rolls another die. He then comes back and says the spell basically misfired and shocked the already injured player 
causing more damage. I stopped stuff there and asked how he determined that the spell failed. He said he rolls percentage. If you get over 50, you're good. Get below 50, then he rolls a die and checks the table. When I ask to see the table, he doesn't procure it. I should have stopped playing, but he's my best friend and everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. So I just sat back and decided to watch to see how this game was going to play out, as it was just starting. We basically limped back to the unusually large mega city, job uncompleted. So no pay, except we get a pity payment for taking out some of the rats. Oh, and someone with a flying pet familiar, the vigilante, was able to report that some kind of demon with crystal shards sticking out of it was in the woods in the nearby fields controlling the rats. So a few extra coins for intel, just enough to buy some cure potions from the vendor or to transition our reward into guild gold to use to buy cursed magic items as magic items also have the chance to mess up. I use up what non-magic healing stuff I had bought and purchased more. After OBMF tries a health potion, turns blue, then vomits rainbows. I use my own funds to heal the party while the dwarf cleric gets drunk as he punch heals people. The next mission we take up is to hunt down a few bandits. Seems good, right? Wrong. Oh, so wrong. We head out of the mega city and start making our way in the direction of the bandits last known location. We have to collect the heads of the bandits to get our pay and since I'm a cavalier, I'm the only one with a horse. We pull together enough gold to buy a cart to attach to my horse and start hunting down bandits. First group we encounter was again way above our level 2 group's challenge rating. These were bandits with full on class levels and some were levels above us, such that we got our asses so kicked we had to run back to the city. So the guild, aka GM, decides to send us with an overly powerful character. I was not liking this one bit and thought that he actually wanted to play a very silly game instead of a somewhat serious one at this point. We head back out to hunt down the bandits, despite most of us wanting to give up and just work on building the walls, but that job was no longer available. It was bandits or nothing, so we head back out to fight bandits. The fights with a number of the bandit groups go much better, only because the GM's higher level DMPC is one-shotting all the bandits. We come across a group of weird guys and bandits transporting some goods and are instantly attacked, forcing us to try to take them down ourselves. The NPC one-shot archer is occupied making lovey-dovey eyes at the vigilante elsewhere in the mega forest because God forbid our encounters be normal in size or scope. Then we discover that all the weird guys are part of some doomsday cult that are magic users who sling spells with the potential to backfire and blow their own faces off. In my opinion, there are way too many spellcasters in a world where casting prestidigitation could result in your face melting off. We killed the cultists, who didn't manage to kill themselves, as well as the bandits. One Shot Archer then returns and discovers that they were carrying a bomb, a bomb which the DM allows to be teleported away by a magic device that Vigilante discovered. The device teleports the bomb to a mountainside, which then explodes with so much force that half the mountain is gone. Alright, I gotta say a few things here. The world being full of wild magic, enough to the point that any spell cast, or any magic device, or even potions for that matter, can end up with a wild magic surge on a chart that the players have no control over, is already bad enough. It would be an interesting world to play in. Although, personally, I would make it where crafting the magic potions, or crafting magic items, would come with the danger and the wild magic surges. You wouldn't want everything touched by magic to have lethality to it. One other note, the fact that this magic device worked flawlessly to teleport the bomb away already tells me that this DM just doesn't really want the players to have magic. The amount of railroading and scaling is terrible. A thousand dire rats? There's nothing that the party can do. And oh boy, a DMPC. How much better can this game get? Well, let's go ahead and continue. It was at this point I decided that, yeah, he meant for this to be a very silly game. So, I created Pink Amina Wilson. The concept was a cross between Pinkie Pie and Deadpool, a pink gnome with pink hair and red eyes, with a blue horse she called Apple 
who was once a house pet but was transformed by magic gone awry. I used magic like crazy, so he got to do his little dice ritual, until he started to forget to do it. But the game eventually got worse. Another DMPC party member was added beyond one-shot Archer, a Dryder. And Miss Dryder was the best of the best, who wanted us to help rescue the Pirate King's daughter, which required a boat trip plagued with overpowered enemies, and Miss Dryder basically saving us over and over again, alongside one-shot Archer. We get to an island and head into an underground tunnel system. OBMF and Pinkamina end up separated from the group, because Miss Dryder told us to go off in another direction, only for us to encounter a mega-sized monster in an underground space with no reasonable way for it to have gotten down there. The monster one-hits Pinkamina. I sit back and just watch the others get decimated, but then rescued at the last moment by Miss Dryder and One-Shot Archer. Having failed, they were carried out, along with Pinkamina's body, back to the ship. There, Miss Dryder uses a magical potion which brings people back to life, or back from the brink of death without any side effects. GM gets to me, and I say that Pink refuses to be brought back to life. I then lay out my issues with his game, of which we played six day long sessions of. Other players back me up, adding in their own two cents on top. GM gets exposed. He did not create a chart to see what the effects of a spell gone wrong would have been. The whole group agreed that Gustav will not GM again, as not only was the story terrible, but the whole setup for the world setting was terribly done, and there was so much wrong with the encounters that we didn't even stand a chance. Also, because he sees it as the GM's job to try to kill the players. So, Gustav still plays with us. He is my brother from another mother, after all. He just isn't allowed to GM. Angelica, thank you so much for sharing your tale. And I didn't think it could get much worse by already having a DMPC. But instead, you guys ended up with two DMPCs. And the DM split up the party using the NPC. So his DMPC could come in and rescue the day! Just... Ugh. I'm really glad that you and the rest of the party were able to stand up to him and tell him, listen, we still like you, but this game is not working for us. And it could be that he just needs more practice or he needs more time. But when there are about five, maybe even six or seven red flags going off at the same time, I think Gustav is better off sitting at the table and learning a little bit more about how a game is supposed to be played. Maybe he'll be ready to give it another shot later on down the road. I'm sorry you guys went through that bad experience, but I'm glad you guys are still playing together. This next story is shared to me by Chris the Dice Maniac. He actually sent me an email, which is another good way to share your tale. Chris, thank you very much for sharing your story. A single player caused me to lose three characters and ruined my friendship with the DM. Okay, I have a story about how I got kicked out of a D&D group but also ended up having a friendship with someone I considered a good friend, completely ruined in the process. Now, let me just say, the DM I was with I had been friends with since 3.5. We dove through the wonderful world of 4.0. Then tragedy struck. A short from where his microwave was plugged in caused a fire in my DM's apartment, and he lost everything. All his maps, books, and D&D supplies literally went up in flames. I was there consoling him as he basically had to put his life back together. It took a couple of years, but 5.0 came out, and out of nowhere, my old friend calls me, telling me he's been running a new campaign at this hobby shop in a nearby shopping mall with a group of new friends he's met. Awesome! Fifth edition? Sounds like a clean slate to create new stories and meet some new players. Now, over the time, we had players come and go, but we had a core group of players. However, the main people to be concerned with are me, DM, and let's call him Rasputin for anonymity. This is a guy in his 20s who is well-dressed and always wore a fedora. He played two characters, both being wizards. One we all called the Mad Wizard, and the other was some ice wizard that was his original character's brother. Narcissistic doesn't even begin to describe this player, and as you read, you'll see why I say that. So, for a few weeks, everything was going great. I was rusty and needed some guidance as to how things work in 5.0, but I wasn't a complete noob. Now, I'm a guy who gets into his character. I like to speak with a different voice and give my character a personality. 
So my first character I made was Gillian. Gillian was a dwarf barbarian and he was a total drunk. All he cared about was drinking and fighting. Simple concept that led to some hilarious moments. Like the time he was looking for the Fighters Guild, stumbled into the Hunters Guild looking for a fight, and ended up getting a quest to go kill some boars bothering the farmers. Yeah, the Barbarian was doing quest for the Hunters Guild, thinking it's the Fighters Guild. <laughs> lol. Then things started to take us our turn, as Rasputin had decided to start making the game all about himself. He basically started making real snarky comments about my character being a worthless drunk, and questioning why we even bring him along. Whatever. I figured he was playing the character, seeing as how his character was a mad wizard driven to insanity with arcing power. Well, one of them anyway. I never really could tell the difference between his two stupid characters. This leads us to traveling down a dungeon. After slaying some nasty minotaur, we come to a room that has a lever and a mirror in it. So I decided to pull the lever all the way right. A hellish red portal opened in the mirror, pushed it all the way left. A glittery gold portal opened in the mirror, lock it in the middle, an aqua blue portal opened. We all sat around and debated on what to do. It took about 15 to 20 minutes of squabbling before I decided to bite the bullet. I figured red equals bad for obvious reasons. Gold I wasn't sure, but I figured aqua was a ticket out of this dungeon we were wandering around in for weeks. So I took the plunge and dove through the aqua portal. That was when Rasputin looked at the portal, shrugged his shoulders, and convinced the group to turn around and leave the room and go in a different direction. He literally said, Well, he's dead. He was a worthless drunk anyway, so let's go find a way out. I couldn't believe it. The entire table literally abandoned my character. I'm sitting there like, Really? You're going to leave my character? Rasputin just smirked and said, Sorry, you might as well bring in another character. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, and by the way, in case you're curious, my character ended up in a completely different realm, on an island, probably to this day sitting there waiting for his teammates to join him. I literally had no choice but to make a new character. Now on the one hand, I can see that if a player just up and decides to do something, that doesn't mean the rest of the party has to follow him. On the other hand, the players were stalling for 15 minutes, so at least Gillian did something. Pretty dickish of Rasputin to ditch Gillian, though. That doesn't excuse the rest of the party, though. They really could have stood up and said, Hold up, we gotta find out what's happening to him. I don't know, what do you guys think of this situation? Let's return to Chris's tale. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but I figured at least the character technically isn't dead. So, in the following game, I decided to make a Loxodon fighter. He was a big rugged boy who broke from his pack feeling the peaceful life the Loxodon lived wasn't for him. I was excited because the Loxodon looked like a fun race, so he got thrown into the dungeon with the group, being found in a prison cage. Simple enough introduction. Welp, this leads to a huge issue, and when I say huge, I literally mean as in size. The dungeon was so stinking small and narrow, my character literally couldn't fit anywhere. Insert me ripping my hair out here. How the hell did my character wind up in a damn prison there if he couldn't fit down a hallway? So, okay, fine. My mistake. I admit, I didn't think of that being an issue with such a large race, and I should have just picked something more average, I guess. Rasputin literally told the group, Abandon the fat ass! He's of no use to us! He can't even fit through the door! He's a f***ing mage with teleport spells. Insert me giving myself a concussion, banging my head against the wall here. Yet again, I had no choice but to make another character as the group abandoned me. Insert me reaching for the ibuprofen here. Now, let me sidetrack here for a second and say that I did pull my DM aside, and I did voice my concern about how this guy seemed to have it out for me. The DM told me I should just tell Rasputin how I was feeling. I knew that that was a bad idea to begin with, because without a mediator in the middle, there was a chance a fistfight would break out, because he's got a self-absorbed attitude, and I'm not someone who takes crap from people. So I felt like we were sitting on a powder keg, and I wanted to resolve this in the most civil way we can, and my DM wanted nothing to do with it. Great. This is the hand I was dealt. It was at this point I probably should have left the group in hindsight, but the DM is one of my dearest friends, and I didn't want to quit his game. 
So back to the subject at hand. This led to three weeks of Rasputin and his two wizard characters having a self-PVP battle, which was the most boring thing I ever sat through. And it got to the point I was like, why am I even here? This is what I meant when I said that this guy was so narcissistic. He was acting like this was the most awesome thing in the entire game, as everyone at the table sat there and watched for turn after turn after turn, where he'd roll attacks between his two stupid characters attacking each other. I got up and walked around the mall at this point, because I was about to fall asleep at the table, and was craving a soft pretzel anyway. Thank you, Aunt Annie's, for giving me a reason to leave the table. To be fair, the DM eventually did put a stop to the whole circus, and said, as the attacks collided, it ripped a portal open and both characters got sucked through. <laughs> Thank Paylor. Back to normality. Hold up. The DM allowed Rasputin to not only take control of the game for three weeks, but also allowed him to have two player characters. And why did the DM allow Chris to make a Loxodon character if he wasn't going to be allowed to go through the dungeon? The DM is at fault here as well. It can't all be Rasputin. So just for the record, here's where I'm at now. Dwarven Barbarian is somewhere on an island in no man's land, in a completely different realm, and a Loxodon fighter has been abandoned in a dungeon where he can't fit anywhere because he's too big, which I to this day don't understand how in the hell he got there to begin with. This eventually led me to making a Goblin Rogue this time. I played a Goblin Rogue before. Awesome character everyone enjoyed complete with a mobster New York accent that had no problem stealing from anyone and was shameless about it. Even when he would get caught, he would always say something to the degree of, Hey, y'all didn't see nothing, alright? Forget about it. I was excited. So the following game, the group jumps into a new dungeon, and then my character comes in. I was hoping for everyone to enjoy my new character, because this is my personal favorite of mine, in my archive of characters I've done in D&D. So what happens? My character wasn't there for more than a minute before Rasputin literally bellowed, Zum, it's a goblin, murder it! My brand new character literally got downright slaughtered by the entire party for no reason at all. This is the third character I lost because of Rasputin. It was at this moment I realized everyone at the table was a mindless sheep and was following Rasputin's character like he's some sort of leader. I was in a state of catatonic shock at that point. My DM, my good friend, literally allowed this travesty to happen. And Rasputin sat there like a smug prick, with a smile that makes you want to throw a brick at him. And he finally said, Hey, next time, why don't you try bringing in a character that isn't god-awful? Listen, I'm not a violent person, and I do admit I could have handled this better than I did. I'm generally the goofy big guy in the group that makes everyone laugh and has a cherub-like demeanor. Well, my cherub-like demeanor was gone. And worth noting, I talked to the DM in private about my issues with him, and the DM told me to tell Rasputin how I feel, and the DM did next to nothing about any of these issues. So what was I supposed to do at this point, huh? This was a setup for disaster, regardless of how you write it. So right then and there, I decided to take my DM's advice, and I told Rasputin how I felt in a profanity-laced tirade, and basically said that if he says one more thing to me, I'm gonna knock the stupid-looking fedora off his head and shove it up his ass. How does Rasputin react? He starts to cry. Keep in mind, this isn't a child. This is a grown-ass adult in his 20s. And when I say cry, I mean legit waterworks started streaming down his face. Apparently, I'm such a monster that I can make a grown adult man cry. Have you ever had one of those moments in life where all you can do is throw your arms up and walk away because there isn't a damn thing you can say or do that can make the situation any better? This was one of those moments. So after that game, I let the smoke settle and I talked with my DM and told him I can't deal with Rasputin anymore. To my absolute shock, my DM told me my options are either deal with it or go to a different table. What? That's the ultimatum? I couldn't believe that this was the supposed solution to the problem. I outright refused to play with Rasputin anymore, and my DM said, Well, I guess you're going to a different table then, aren't ya? That cut me deeply. I, to this day, literally feel as if he chose Rasputin over me. At that point, I figured the best thing to do was to swallow my pride and move on. TLDR 
Shitty player acts like a jackass. Shitty DM does nothing about it. Good player loses three characters in ridiculous scenarios the DM should have prevented. Good player makes shitty player cry like a baby. DM takes the side of the shitty player and kicks the good player out. Epilogue I ended up going to a different table with new players and a new DM. That's a story for another day. I'm not going to go into here. My friendship with the DM in this story has pretty much ended, especially after I raised a stink over one of his players hooking up with my ex-GF, and he told me to get over it and that I'm acting like a baby, and to stop wishing ill will on his group. The worst part is, the DM passed away back in September from stage 4 cancer, and it actually hurts to think this is how things went. As far as Rasputin goes, the thing that really left a sour taste in my mouth is that the DM literally kicked him out of the group a few months later after I left because he and his girlfriend broke up and they wanted his girlfriend more than him and I never got invited back. Thank you. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your tale. Honestly, in this situation, I really feel like the DM is at the wrong here. It's sad to say, but he could have handled the situation much better and sooner. I suspect that Rasputin cried because he wasn't expecting to make you upset. Often, narcissists don't notice what they're doing. I'm really sorry that you ended up in a bad experience and that it damaged your friendship with the DM, a friendship that you sadly never got to repair. Hopefully Rasputin and you and the rest of the players are able to reflect on the times you had with the DM though and enjoy the good memories you had with him. I just really hope that everyone is able to learn from their experiences and be able to have better relationships and better communication in the future. But that is at least what I think. I want to hear what everybody else thinks down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way down there. That's going to do it for today. And until next time, hope you feel inspired.